you want to get, you want to say, is it now over and you don't know? So you can zero it and then see if it comes up again. That's a really handy feature. Sometimes you don't know what you are looking for. The traffic is way too high to capture. So it was also handy to, to make a sort of random sampler that is just taking frames out uh, randomly out of the stream, copying it to the PC, reducing the data rate, a bit like uh, S-Flow is working as well. And that consisted just of, as a frame counter that um, controls a random number generator. Actually, the random number generator is constantly making numbers. And once the counter, frame counter counted one up, it's copying that random number into this register and it's just compared to that next frame counter and that makes that there's a sample coming out. Um, I haven't really used this feature, but it might be handy in the future. It was easy to program there. Another thing is, on troubleshooting, you also want to look at, um, at uh, frame checksums, or not, not really frame checksums, but checksums in the, in, the, in the IP header, or checksum, TCP checksum, or ICMP checksums, or UDP checksums, just to see if this tuttle is being changed in Buddle somewhere. That makes that the uh, frame checksum doesn't match. And this turned out to really, really a hard one. Because that force 10 system is giving you frames, 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 frames in all kinds of words. And then suddenly you get a new frame. It doesn't tell you, hey, this is the end of the frame. And TCP and UDP checksums and ICMP checksums are really calculated over the entire packet. So your packet is there. You can calculate your checksum. And then you say, hey, this was the packet I'm interested in, but it's already gone. I didn't solve this solution yet. I didn't solve this yet. I don't have any idea on, on how to, to work on it. One thing could be using the length field. Yeah. But the length field, um, I think it's kind of a dodgy solution because um, you, you, you work with the data, you, you use the data that you, you want to work with. So, um, the solution is probably in the front end FPGA where, where you know where the end of the frame is. And then you also know that you might have a frame that's too long or a frame that's too short. And you can trigger on that as well. And this is actually where the project is basically is right now. Um, a future solution, future wish is using this SRAM memory. Because remember this example one where we had one frame before that was actually causing the problem that you were looking at. So it might be handy to store the, fr the f different frames coming by and then have a trigger and have the frames before that, basically looking back in time. For that, this SRAM is a well, handy f resource to have. But um, the problem is that the, the API from Force 10 really doesn't, really doesn't uh, describe how this SRAM is, being, uh, is working. And um, I have to think, I have to reverse engineer that, that part, unfortunately. So this is where the project is now. And we still have 15 minutes left, so there's a lot of time for questions. A uh, question there. Can you please wait for the microphone? You said that the main processor contains these snort rules. I realize that you may not be using those at the moment. Is it just the rules or is there any pre-processing done? Because I would think that would really interfere with your monitoring if the pre-processors were being used before you actually looked at the package. Yes, yes. The, the pre-processor is... Um, uh, I didn't draw it. It's, it's here. It's before the before it's being converted to 128 uh, bits. There's there's a preprocessor there, and that's really interfering. So um, 
At first, I asked uh, meter networks to bypass this whole thing, um, and they did. Uh, now I also have the code for that FPGA in without the preprocessor. So that's not doing it. The rest is not interfering with any data. The snort rules itself are all in the backend FPGA. And, well, um, I, don't, I don't use that snort. I even never used it as a snort box. I, I don't know how that works, actually. So. That, does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Any other questions, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, on the calculation of uh, CRCs for IP packets, uh, if you've already discarded the earlier uh, packets that were captured, uh, you don't have them around to calculate the, the CRC for the later halves. Uh, but you, you could maintain a uh, partially calculated checksum. Uh, and uh, if you, you have enough data to like uh, match it up so that, or so that you recognize it with, with the later fragments that come in. You say, I, you, you can calculate the checksum partially. Hmm? Um, yes. But you need to match it against a checksum that is, that is in the packet. Um, right, yeah. Uh, so I don't uh -huh. really understand how to do that. You, you have, let's say, one as checksum right. in your packet, uh -huh. and then you calculate, and you come with and you come at zero. But it might be that this fraction you have left that you cannot calculate right now, if I mm -hmm. cannot calculate right now, makes it zero again. Mm -hmm. uh, makes it one again. And uh, then the packet is good. So um, I don't see how, if you can tell me how I can partially calculate a checksum, then I'm really interested. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, I think. Well, what well, I can what I can do is I and, and actually did I can calculate the IP checksum without option headers mm -hmm. because just the IP packet alone is mm -hmm. and 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 the Ethernet frame is too small to match the minimum of 64 bytes. So I have some padding bytes left to do the calculation. IP is possible. IPv6 doesn't have a checksum. Um, but you basically are more interested into this payload data, that is this, where you have much, much more chance to have a bit error in. And that is being calculated right at the end of that frame. And the problem is that I don't know where the end of the frame is. That's, but if I can partially calculate, I'm really interested. I'm, I'm not so smart to do that. You had? Yeah. Um, the two Xen packs or whatever it is are used. Um, x pack. x pack, okay. You use the, or the, the, the end is used, and the other components are probably also active. So if the power fails on the box, then, then the link is dead? Then or? there's no forwarding. Okay. Um, no. Do you use other mechanisms? Because I guess that customers don't really like you. Well, probably they already have a problem when you put a box in between, but. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, 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 it's not really not meant to, to be permanently into the line. Okay. At first, we don't want to, we are not using this as for any inter lawful interception, whatever. We, it's not happening at, at, at the Internet Exchange because you have. Okay. It's just to put into the line, to look at the traffic, and getting it out of, again. The um, photonic switch that we use to do that, to oh, put it, it copies in, the data already, right? Is, so. is also an active device. It's, you have photonic switches that are um, basically relays that relay okay. fiber, but these are these mirrors that are being held into position by static electricity. It also needs power. The ethernet switches also need power. So the solution here is use redundant power. And um, another thing is that many, many ISPs have their own redundancy solutions. You can have two connections uh, at one internet exchange. They can use M6 and D6, whatever. Yep. And so. Hello. 
Um, uh, my question is regarding WANFI and LANFI. I believe your switch vendor supports both. Uh, does this solution support you um, doing the same thing with um, well, WANFI config lift? We don't support WANFI framing at the M6. Um, we only do Ethernet framing. Um, well, that's still Ethernet framing, but okay. Um, and there are no these these. Well, uh, WANFI is not a framing, right? Well, you, you instead of doing 64B66 framing, you do well, STM64 framing. It's still Ethernet frames. Well, okay, yeah, it depends on how you define Ethernet yeah, framing. Yeah, but, but we only look at, at the real, the plain Ethernet frame, preamble, start of frame delimiter, MAC addresses. This is what we see. We don't support any STM1 or other type of connection. Okay, I'm not talking about packet or resonant. I'm still talking Ethernet, but. It's, in, it's framed so it's compatible with STM64, but it's still Ethernet. But okay, your, your answer is no, uh, that, that's what I was looking no, for. And, and also this, this uh, XPAC optics that are on this, this, this thing, um, yeah, that, that just only Ethernet framing. It's well, yes, for instance, your, your Ethernet switches, uh, I know for a fact, can be configured for WANFI or LANFI on the port. So um, it, it has uh, a dual mode framer that, that will do this. So my question was this, uh, if the X-Packs, uh, I don't know if the framer is on the X-Pack like, like on the Zen-Pack or if it's an XFP type. It's, it's on the X-Pack. Um, they don't do that. Yeah, then that, that yeah, is the no, question. Then it's not a problem. We don't use it. So. More questions? Okay. Then I hope it was uh, clear and, and interesting for you. <laughs>